Hey everyone, this is Dr. John Pham. Please stay tuned for this podcast where we talk about innovation, inspiration, embrace, and the 500 million consumers who are sitting in the blue ocean just waiting to walk into our practices. Welcome to another Aligner Insider podcast. Well, hello, everybody in podcast land. Welcome back to another Aligner Insider podcast. I am Dean Steinman, president of Ortho Marketing. To my right is the world famous Dr. Barry Glazer. And to my left today, we are very excited to have a super special guest. Um, We have Dr. John Pham with us, who is um, the um, CEO and founder of an incredible platform, Embraces. And just would love to learn a little bit more about what's going on and um, John to tell us a... um, about his journey, it's an incredible journey. I mean, it's something that you really should buckle down and listen to. It's uh, it's it's incredible. The it's the American success story in, in, times three. It's 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 great and um, a incredible platform. Um, you know, anybody that is um, in the industry has heard about it and heard about a uh, it's a very successful um, funding they just did and getting the name out there. And uh, you know, John's going to tell the story about it there. So, um, hey guys, how you doing today? Doing good. Uh, thanks for having me here, Dean and Barry. Oh, my, my pleasure. So, John, um, tell us a little bit. All right. Tell us, John Pham, tell us a little bit about your background. It's an interesting story. Um, tell us a little bit who you are and how you um, you, you, you started this um, this great journey. Yeah, I think that's a, it's a story that's maybe 40 years in the making, depending on how far back we want to go. But uh, I'll, I'll start off with, uh, you know, I, I am an um, engineer by training. Uh, worked at uh, the Boeing Corporation uh, uh, doing aerospace engineering. Um, dropped out of school a couple of times before that to do a few startups. Um, and somehow along the way, uh, became an orthodontist. Um, and so, you know, uh, it's, it's been really... Yada, yada, a, yada. I became an orthodontist. <laughs> <laughs> Cra- crazy, amazing, you know, dream uh, come true. And... Um, uh, I'll say, you know, with, with Embrace, it's been a wild ride. You know, the last couple of years, just the support we've had from the orthotic community, uh, raising $178 million plus over the last two, three years. Um, it's, 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 it really is validation. I was talking to both of you, you know, earlier. It really is validation that orthodontists can do anything and they set their mind to it. Really, really true. And, you know, we've seen some incredible things. I mean, just from an orthodontic standpoint of what people could do in technologies and, you know, it, be, being obviously an, a, an engineer, um, when you built Embrace, what what was the was the precipice of doing it? How did you come up with the idea? Why um, did you do so? Obviously, there is um, a big, big, big player in the industry. Uh, what made you even come even come with the idea to, okay, I'm going to jump into this realm here? Well, there's, there's two themes that maybe I'd like to revisit, you know, uh, over and over again on this talk is one is about market growth and two is about growth through being fundamentally different. And um, I learned that from a very early age. Um, you know, um, if I can kind of start off with sort of the John Pham story, because it ties sure. very much yeah, I'd love to the I'd love to hear your, your family story. It's very interesting. And, 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 it's right. And it ties into you. Actually, you. It ties into all of our stories as Americans. You know, um, I'm from an immigrant family. Every American is an immigrant. You know, some at some point, you know, going back generations, and uh, we came here as farmers on rickety boats, and um, uh, we settled on the east side of LA. Uh, and um, when we came here, all we had were seeds in our pockets. So uh, we we did what I call you know ghetto farming. We didn't know any better, but we had little pockets of land on the sidewalk in the city, and we just mm-hmm. planted whatever herbs we had that we brought over from Asia <laughs> there. So, you know, um, you, get, you may have heard of things like, you know, bok choy and Asian mints and all those things. Like we were the first ones to kind of uh, bring this to America back in the 70s. Hmm. And um, uh, in, in L.A., when you exit the freeway, you see sometimes these kids selling oranges and fruits and vegetables. Right. And, mm-hmm. You know, that was me, except we were selling Asian herbs. And, <laughs> and, you know, what's, what's kind of, I, I bring it up because at that time in an early age, I learned, you know, the notion of selling, but not to selling more or better of what someone else had, but selling something different, right? You know, there's the kid that's going to sell oranges and he does what he does. There's a the kid that's going to sell lemonade and she does what she does. 
And then there's a place for something different, like Asian herbs. And, you know, I'll do what I do. And guess what? There's a market for all these things, mm-hmm. right? I'm going to bring this back to dentistry later, okay? Okay. <laughs> but but um, fast forward, you know, um, um, you know, 20 years or so, we, we finally had um, a plot of land to, you know, call our own. And our house kind of became a halfway home for immigrants from other countries, um, to kind of, you know, get situated, you know, in the States and we just farmed together. And, um, you know, there we, we kind of learned that no matter where you're from, what background you have, you always have a way to contribute. Right. Interesting. Uh, and well, I also learned that I hated farming. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. What was your beacon as a child or, you know, were growing up to actually take things to the different level and to get you know, to, to break through from immigrant farmers to, you know, get into, to become an engineer. And then obviously from there, an orthodontist, what, what was the motivating factor behind you to, to do that? Well, so when I finally got to college, UCLA, my first week there, it was during the tech boom and I dropped out. Right. And oh, okay. I wanted to, to, to try something different outside of farming. So there was this thing called the internet at the time that sounded kind of cool. So uh, my friends and I um, started a company uh, with this idea that um, if you um, create a marketplace online and you get people to look for things they want, you can click a button and then the thing will show up at your doorstep. Um, I think we call it, you know, online shopping now. At the time, we called it e-commerce. Um, <laughs> but but through that, you know, we we learned sort of the power of ideas, the power of venture capital, and how fast something can really sort of, you know, skyrocket if, if you hit the right idea with the right people at the right time right um so um you know i'm c- circling back here to how you know i finally became an orthodontist and dentist is that you know obviously dropping out of school my mom almost killed me for it and you know the story goes i promised her that if i should let me drop out i'll be the uh, asian doctor's son that she always wanted <laughs> um so the tech crash is probably one of the best things that ever happened to me you know, right. yeah. this humble pie teaches you a lot. You know, you learn that the accolades and the things you buy don't define you, don't own you. And you also learn that mama never forgets. So she said, yeah. hey, you know, um, uh, one day when I was working at Boeing as, a, as an engineer, she said, hey, you remember what you promised me? So I said, okay, okay, mom, you know, um, I'll, I'll go back to school. I'll become that doctor you always wanted. I right. chose dentistry. Yeah. And to answer your question, Dean, how did we come up with Embrace was, when I was going through my rotations in orthotic residency at Children's Hospital Los Angeles, um, that's where the genesis of this came. Hmm. And if you know anything about treating kids with cleft lip and palate, uh, we may know that it's the most severe types of malocclusions out there, usually from you know the most you know socioeconomically deprived type backgrounds. And these kids usually have to drive from hours away for months and years on end. And as an engineer, you know, I thought, you know, is there a way to leverage the latest technologies so that they don't have to come in every single month for years on end for these activations so that they don't have to be in pain as often. And most importantly, so they don't have to look worse before they look better. I mean, no one wants to look worse before they look better, especially (laughs) going through aesthetic treatment. And so that was the genesis of, 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 of Embrace. And we found along the way, this sounds very obvious now, but the need for these things extends beyond just these children with cleft lip and palate. It extends to people like you and me and our friends and, you know, the, you know, 500 million consumers who could benefit from something like this that are not opting into orthotic treatment, which is, you know, a whole nother conversation that I can go into. But, but Dean, um, to answer your question in a long roundabout way, that, that was the beginning of Embrace. So did you have a Doc Brown moment and like hit your head on the, on the uh, side of, one point, of the one point twenty one gigawatt? You saw the, the, fl- the flex capacitor? How did you come up? You know, what was what was the light bulb? I, I you know, the, look, like it's it's a tried and true statement, but we all stand on the shoulders of giants, right? right. And so the notion of I'm gonna get clinical now, but light, continuous, gentle forces moving teeth more effectively is something we know as clinicians, right? Um, um, you know, uh, compliance-free therapy is probably the most predictable type of outcome out there. And, um, you know, and, and, and we know that consumers, you know, want more aesthetic, lifestyle-driven type, you know, uh, treatment modalities. And I think, you know, as orthodontists, we're so outcomes-focused, 
but there's this move to also be more process focused. People want to enjoy the journey as much as the destination. So, you know, all, all these little pieces came together to, you know, the digital treatment planning and all the research we were doing at the time to, 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 to you know, turn into what we've developed now is the Embrace Smart Wire, which kind of, you know, I have here in front of me, right, to okay. do, do a little plug. But, okay. you know, each one of these smart wires is made out of what you call programmed shape memory wire. And it's custom made for each patient and it sits behind the teeth to work continuously, gently through time without any compliance, you know, needed yeah. on the patient side. And what we're excited about, Dean, is that we've been able to tap into a whole new type of consumer, right, that have previously opted out of treatment because the options we have available weren't for them. And that's what's really exciting us and the whole investment community. Yeah. And so if I, can, if I could jump in here. So this was um, 2011, 2012. Is this where it kind of started? So it's interesting because, you know, at that point, you know, everybody was you know, thinking plastic. Um, so what did you have any background in, in lingual uh, orthodontics before then that made you sort of, let's say, veer away from the aligner craze? You know, I, I, um, I will say sometimes um, it takes an outsider to, to bring something different. And um, I want to first off say I have nothing against labial braces. I have nothing against aligners. You know, um, I think there's a space for all types of treatments, right? What I am against is not looking for progress to treat as many patients out there as possible, right? Um, and just being boxed into what we think this is the answer and that's it, you know? So um, what, 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 what I, I did was, you know, our team did was we looked at the history of orthodontics, Right. Um, if, if you look at the history of orthodontics, you know, it took new categories or new modalities of treatment to grow and bring in new types of consumers. You know, back in the 80s, this before aligners, back in the 80s, when all we thought about were metal braces, I think there was a company that brought ceramic braces to the market. And what did our colleagues say? Oh, we don't need this. I'm doing fine with my people love the way these metal braces look. I can't finish with those ceramic type braces. And Guess what it did? It grew the market. Uh, I don't know if you, you know this, but it almost doubled the amount of orthotic starts in the U.S., hmm. right? And then after 20 years, it became a commodity, right? It kind of like, you know, uh, leveled out as a type of the number of people that would want that kind of treatment. And then plastic came, right? And again, hmm. brought in a new consumer, revolutionized, you know, how orthotic treatment is done, and it doubled the market again, right? Hmm. And, you know, um, I think today... Um, you know, I think plastic's done a great job, but now you start seeing, you know, more companies doing plastic. My plastic is better. My plastic is cheaper. My plastic is faster. It's almost become commoditized. And, you know, m m my question, my challenge to all orthodontists is what's going to double the market yet again? You know, will a clearer, clearer liner do that? Will a straighter, straight wire do that? Or something that's fundamentally different? You know, and, and, and that's that's my thesis here is that I think it's something fundamentally different. And that's what we're here trying to push forth, not to cannibalize or eat anybody's lunch, but to bring in more people to the party, you know, and have lunch with more people. Right. I don't know if that made sense. I, I hope I said that. Totally well. does. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, so, and, and, so, and, and so, you know, I'm sorry to kind of go back here. I think in, in you know, in, in, in dentistry, we've all been trained to just do more of the same, more of the same, more of the same. Right. And, and even when, when, when folks were pioneering plastic the way, the way you were, Barry, it was so hard for you. Right. And finally, after like 15 years, people are finally starting to get it, you know. But, but what's the next thing? You know, mm -hmm. we got to keep pushing and challenging that as we go. That's, that's our job as a profession, I think. Um, so I'm going to ask you, when you had your entrepreneur hat on and you, and you got started this, this journey and um, coming up with this program, what's the biggest challenge that you faced and how did you overcome it? It's funny, right? Because um, I think the biggest challenge is our own resistance to change as a profession. You know, mm -hmm. Dr. Anil Adikula, who I really respect, you know, um, he was just at an entrepreneur's conference two weeks ago. And he said, you know, he asked us, he said, you know, when you're driving down the freeway, what's the, what's the safest lane to drive on? Do you know? Um. At probably the, the middle, I'm going to guess. Middle lane. That's right. Oh, okay. And, and our profession is full of, he said, you guys are a bunch of middle lane people. Okay. Interesting. You know? All right. Um, because again, 
we're, we're trained to just kind of do more of the same, be cookie cutter. Even in school, it's like, hey, if, if Barry's doing research, I should do research too, because that's how I get into residency. And if he's volunteering for ASB president, I should be ASB president too. And, and what you get is this clearer braces, you know, or, 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 or maybe, maybe after 100 years of it, then you get clearer, clearer liners, you know. But, you know, I just want to keep pressing here because, because if, if, we, if, we're, if, 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 if a few of us are, are willing to kind of go into the fast lane and think about what the, what the consumers want, you know, why is it that, there's, that some of our best friends know they want teeth straightening but are not opting in? Well, why is that? right um then then we'll get more innovation and and you know innovation can be technology technology innovation or business innovation or education innovation innovation means a zillion things there's more than one way of doing things hmm. um what's the biggest myth about embrace that you want to debunk it's not better lingual braces okay. right lingual braces are a thing of the past there's a reason why lingual braces was niche just like before Invisalign, there was a reason why moving teeth with these Essex retainers was a niche thing. Right. You know, Invisalign came around and changed the world's thought of what clear aligners are. They introduced the word clear aligner to the market, revolutionized what we thought about how digital processes can be used in our practice. Right. No one is going out of business because Invisalign and clear aligners exist. And so the biggest sort of, I think, misconception that folks have about Embrace is that it's lingual or it's digital. Sure, it is, but that's not the point. The point is that we're growing the market. We're tapping into a whole new type of consumer, what I call the blue ocean. You know, the way Tesla did, the way iPhones did, the way Clear Aligners did, the way Clear Braces did, so on and so forth. Talk about Tesla, so obviously doing some research. So you, you, you guys call yourself the Tesla of braces. Walk me, walk me through that. What was the because you know, my ass Teslas are awesome. My a friend of mine got one, um, and Perry was there when I when, when I first drove, you know, test drove the, the Tesla, and, and I came out. I had the biggest smile on my face that I've ever had. It was the greatest experience driving that car. Um, so, what about you know, Tesla? Do you want to uh, uh, you know simulate yourself with? Well, you know, um, Just one brand. of. <laughs> There are two books that have really influenced my life, and I actually just have them right here next to me because I pass about to the whole entire company, right? This, this book, The Golden Age of Orthodontics, okay? okay? And this book called Play Bigger, okay? And I'll kind of explain this here, okay? I'll start off with kind of Play Bigger here. Is Play Bigger is about, again, I'm going back to this thing called fundamentally creating new categories, Right? And when I say new category, it's, it's a line of product or service that fundamentally changes how someone thinks about a certain industry, right? What Tesla did, you know, is they fundamentally changed how we think about driving, right? Um, um, if you asked people 100 years ago, what do you want to make travel easier? You know what they would have said? Faster horses. Right. Okay? <laughs> and then... Ten years ago, if someone said, what do you need in your car? You would have said more horsepower, right? Mm -hmm. And then Tesla came around and introduced, it's not just an electric vehicle. That's, electric vehicles existed before that. But Tesla fundamentally changed the driving experience by introducing autopilot features, by making it fun, by, 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 by bringing in people that never thought about sort of economy cars, and it can actually be, sorry, not economy cars, um, environmentally friendly cars that can actually be Sexy, fast, cool. you know, right. yeah, exactly. and fun yeah. and cool and, and, and right. change how you think about driving, right? right. And so with Embrace, yes, we've introduced in autopilot features, you know, with, with our self-driving technology, fewer interventions, you know, less, you know, less visits, blah, 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 all those sort of like, you know, faster, better, cheaper type things. But fundamentally, again, I'm saying because we've also redefined the teeth training experience by being a new consumer, we've created a whole new category. And that's what's driving all the excitement, you know, in, you know, in the investor community and from the ortho community. And, you know, Dean, sorry to cut you off, but I get really excited about this. Have you guys ever been in a Tesla? Yeah, just, yeah. Yes. just mentioned it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Until you get in one, you don't get it. You know, right. until you I get it, you don't get it. Right. Until, right. Barry, you've done 30 aligners and you know how it actually works 
and you understand force systems and all these things that you don't understand what clear liners do to your business. And that's right. kind of going back to what we're doing here in Braces until you sit down and put down your sort of like prejudgments and, and, and understand what we're trying to do here. You don't get it. Right. Yeah. So, you know, Barry, I mentioned many, many times that people have to adapt or die, you know, as far, in, especially in any business, that technology is, and adapting it's... technology. And if you don't, you're going to be left behind. So, you know, what's one bit of advice that you could um, give a practice that is just um, won't adapt, that won't take that, 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 that leap of faith and, and embrace technology? Because, you know, Dr. Glazer, you know, embraces technology and it's been a game changer for him, making him more efficient, more effective. Um, you know, imagine being able to work less time be more efficient and make more money, you know, and that's what by, you know, plat, you know, the right technology does for marketing, um, you know, from, you know, from, from, you know, from braces, from just, per, all, all just being effective across the board in business. Mm -hmm. So what, what advice would you give somebody if they're, you know, just, you know, wow, I don't want to do that. It's different, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, you know it's, it's not going to work. It's too hard. hard. Dean, Patients are going to want it. You know, the excuses. You, you know, Dean and Barry, I'd like to kind of, add one little wrinkle on what you were just saying about, about, you know, Barry is that, is that again, it's not just faster, better, cheaper, more efficient. It's also about driving top line by bringing consumers that otherwise would never have opted in. And I see Barry nodding his head here, right? Like, mm -hmm. like, you know, plastic fundamentally grew the number of stars. It doubled the market. Correct. Right. Correct. Cause yeah. faster braces would have just been iterations of current braces. You would have been cannibalizing what you have. Right. And so, you know, I want to rewind here. The true innovation grows the market. It's an abundant, infinite market. It's not a finite marketplace. But going back to your question, Dean, about what advice I have, I mean, you know, I can only retell the stories I'm told, right? But right. it's funny, right? I, I had a provider come up to me about three days ago and said, hey, John, I would really love to do Embrace. Um, and I'm... You know, should I get should I get an intro intro oral scanner just so I could do embrace? And I said, Doctor, you know what? You should get an intro oral scanner because it's 2021. <laughs> you, know, you, you should do social media because that's how new people should learn about you. Right. Yeah. You should get a yeah, website. Get a website. So, <laughs> so you know, I'm not here to tell people how to how to run their business because it's a mm -hmm. type of business, a type of practice for every type of business. But I will say that COVID if anything, accelerated what the future is looking for, right? We talk about and, that all the time. And, and, you know, there are those who follow the future and there are those who create it, right? Yeah. And, right. And, and, and the types of people that are really jumping on to what we're doing now are in some ways the same types of people that jumped onto the plastic revolution 20 years ago and the same types of people who jumped onto the ceramic revolution 20 years before that. But you know what's so funny? And this is the challenge I give to our own profession here is people usually start off innovating, adopting change because they want to be different. But once you get to the top, then at that point, you start being defensive and conservative. Right. Hmm. So I would challenge all the early adopters and innovators out there to keep innovating, keep adopting. So I'm going to jump on that. You know, we have a couple more questions. So put your crystal ball glasses on, all right, and talk about the future. Where do you see the orthodontic industry in the next two to three years? I think, first of all, with the other book that I have, The Golden Age of Orthodontics, when is it? It's still ahead of us. You know, one thing that I usually talk about a lot I didn't mention here is this blue ocean of consumers, right? Three out of every four people need some kind of teeth straightening. We know that. There are at least 500 million consumers every single day spending money on Botox, LASIK, cool sculpting, all these aesthetic products that people who care about their face, who care about their lips, who care about their skin, they care about their teeth, right? Why are we not up? tapping into them? Why are so many people still just focused on this finite market of teenagers and tweenagers and all those things, right? So, mm -hmm. so you know, what I see, and I think of it, we should all be people before we are clinicians. So think as a consumer, do we expect this iPhone to be exactly the same in two years as it is today? No. No. Do we expect the Uber experience to be exactly the same today as it is two years from now? No. So we should not expect orthodontia to be exactly the same today as it is two years from now. Dean, I'm in these rooms right now. There's billions of dollars being poured into orthodontics right now. Mm -hmm. And these venture capitalists, I mean, we raised almost $200 million ourselves. 
these venture capitalists are not putting money in to eat our lunch. They're putting money in to take the lunch that we're not eating, the 500 million consumers <laughs> that I'm talking about, right? So what I see is that the market's going to grow. But the question is, who's going to be bringing in those people to the party, us or somebody else? And that's what gets me fired up. Awesome. Two more questions. All right. And then, then these are the most two important questions that I, we could ask. One. Barry, I, I'm sorry. Barry, do you agree? Dean, do you agree? I just <laughs> I, mean, I'm I'm talking, 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 I, here. I think you're right on. I, you know, I, I yeah. think, you know, Ian and I talk about this all the time, all the time, all the time is, you know, adapt or die, you know, must embrace change, embrace technologies. You, you know, you, you know, as Joe Namath said, I can't wait to tomorrow because I get better looking every day. <laughs> you know, you same know, thing you know with- Dean, you feel free to cut this out however way you want. I'm just talking to two friends here, but, but. I do want to kind of, you know, make clear here is that there's many different ways to innovate, right? Like I think sometimes in clinicians' minds, innovation is just about tech. But innovation can be business models, can be education. I mentioned that before. It can be a zillion things like, you know, Uber, Airbnb. These are very simple business model changes, right? It doesn't have to be an embrace, Invisalign, whatever type thing, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, on... On the on the yeah, you hit it right. Adapt or die, right? Um, what did what did um, what did uh, what's his name? Charles Darwin, evolution, right? Okay. Not about better. You know, I think dentists, clinicians, orthodontists were so trained. Better is better. You mm -hmm. know, better is good, but right. better isn't always better. Okay. Oftentimes, right. it's different. You know, it's not the strongest that survive. It's the ones who adapt that survive. Right. 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 You have no choice. You have to. You will, otherwise, you will be left behind because those that do adapt will shine, you know, and, yeah. and give you the competitive advantage. And, you know, and, you know, in order, you know, the reason that Barry is, the, you know, is a dominant practice in his market is he, we promote him as, as offering technologies and making life easier and to make, get you the smile you want on your terms and making things yes. that, you know, using technologies. And, and it's, it's not, this is not your, your, your grandpa's orthodontist. It's things have changed. That's, that's, you know? see, you're, you're, you're hitting all the things exactly. It's, it's your smile, your terms. What do you want? Right. And, as, as I think our profession has been so used to, you come in, let me tell you what you need. Let me tell you what right. you need. You know, let me tell you what's wrong with you, right? And then, yes, again, right. I, I joke about it. Let, let me make you look worse before you look better. You know? <laughs> so that's, that's not going to work for, for, the, for the people that, that, that we know, right? right. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, Dean. I, I got no, fired no, up. No, no, John, it's great. No, I, lo I, you know, I, I love your enthusiasm, man. It's it's um, it's. it's, it's it's contagious for sure, and I, I, I love it. You know, making me smile. I, 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 mean, I, haven't smiled this, I haven't smiled this much on a podcast in a long time, man. Look, look, you know, I, if, I love you know your if, enthusiasm. If I can talk to our colleagues out there, I'm breaking that wall. So, <laughs> if, 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 if 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 I can talk to our colleagues out there, I, I really encourage you know everyone here is just number one, be yourself, right? Yeah. Like, there's going to be kids selling oranges, there's going to be kids selling lemonade, but whatever it is it is that's you, sell it. Right. right, because our profession needs more of it, not more of the same. <laughs> exactly. So, but final two questions, okay? Number one, we're gonna give you the ability to put a billboard up in Times Square tomorrow. It's gonna be seen by 10 million people. What's it gonna say? You, John Fam, or you, Embrace? <laughs> you. It's not a commercial. What's, what are you going to tell? What are you going to tell? Tell me people are going to see your message. What do you want them to, to say, to see? That's a good question. I think it rewinds to the theme of this conversation here is that trust yourself, trust your different and bring who you are to the world because the world needs you. Well, well done. Um, all right. And the most important question ever. Okay. Brace yourself now. Embrace yourself now. <laughs> Reese's peanut butter cup or Hershey bar? Oh, he's thinking. I like Jolly Ranchers. Is that okay? <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Well, I, I like that. All right. I like like that. Okay. There's the answer. Some people want braces. Some people want aligners, but a lot of people want something else. Right, Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> what, and what flavor though? Um, so I, I like the strawberry flavor. Strawberry? Okay. There you go. Great. So, um, John, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. So if 
whoever's listening, um, they want to get more information. They um, want to find out how they can um, bring embrace into their practice. What's the best way for them to do so? I think the best thing to do is just follow us on Instagram at Embrace and see all the stories from the providers and from the consumers that I talk about in the blue ocean, right? Um, right. That, 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 that are sort of enjoying this experience. Um, and then, you know, visit us at Embrace.com, click on, uh, you know, be a provider. And, you know, we have one of the best onboarding teams out there that will help you integrate this technology. Again, as an orthodontist myself, um, you know, I, I know how it's like to dabble and try something new. Um, and, you know, we will make sure that, uh, you know, if you're um, excited to sort of, you know, uh, join this next wave of, you know, orthodontics that, that, that we integrate this well and get your team all behind this. Great. John, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate this. It was uh, very, you know, educational and very entertaining. As I tell you, I said I haven't smiled this much in, on a podcast in a long time. I love your enthusiasm, man. So congratulations on the raise. And congratulations on the, on the success you've had. And, uh, you know, only wish you the best. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Everybody in podcast land, uh, thanks for listening. This is another Aligner Insider podcast. And make sure to stay tuned for our next Aligner podcast. Same bat time, same bat channel. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you, everyone.